Okay, so this uh, video is for the um, FET simulation on waves. I think the main sticking point is um, down here where there's a percent difference calculation. Um, and uh, I want to get to that, but first let's take a look at the app and how to get there. So if uh, you search FET interference in a Google search, then uh, this is the first thing that pops up. So you click it and then it's HTML5. So it will work with your iPad. Click that play arrow, launches the app. And then we have different things, waves interference, slits and diffraction. We're just going to do with waves right now. So there's four different things you can do with your waves. You can use waterways with a uh, dropper, like a faucet. You can have sound waves. You can have light waves coming from a light source. So looking at the faucet, this green button turns the dropper, the water dropper, on and off. Um, and then right now it's making a periodic wave or repeated waves. Um, you can have it make one pulse, just one drip, and you can make it drip yourself, plop. Plop. And so you can do that, but that's not, I'm not sure that's what we want. So we're going to go back to periodic waves and get that guy going. So here's the top view, but you can also do side view for the water waves. And that shows the water waves going. Um, and if the water waves are a little bit hard to track, you can choose slow. That'll slow it down. Um, and uh, that seems pretty slow, but if you're trying to catch the wave right when it crests, it's nice to have that feature. Um, so over here we have the measuring tape. Um, it starts off at a centimeter. There's a plus at the base of the measuring tape and there's another plus over here on the right and that is one centimeter. Um, and uh, you can adjust the length of that tape. It'll tell you how long it is, that's good. We have our stopwatch, hit play, it'll run, pause, reset. Um, also, if you wanna run the stopwatch um, while the animation is paused, like if I pause the animation and hit play on the stopwatch, stopwatch won't go unless you play the animation again. And that's a good way to start the clock, start the stopwatch when you want to start the waves. Um, so there you go. Uh, and then this guy is just like a wave level monitor. Like it's if you want to make it into like a graph, an active graph situation, you can use that. Um, you can change the frequency. So you can have a low frequency, which would be few waves over time. So you can see that the drop really slows down. It doesn't make a lot of drops. So that is a low rate of waves, of waves over time. Or you can increase the frequency and uh, you can have more drops over time. So that's gonna have um, more drops falling. It's uh, not necessarily faster waves, they're just more of them. Um, and uh, so there's the frequency to bring that back to the middle. Um, amplitude is uh, the energy, how high the wave is. I can have zero amplitude. There are going to be no drops because there are no waves. I can have maximum amplitude where the drops are really falling in that water and you get the biggest wave. So the amplitude of the wave is its energy. Um, so that is the water dropper. You can also add a graph to take a look at the graph. And uh, it shows how the amplitude changes and what the position is in centimeters. Um, that might be helpful. Uh, the other things you can do are sound. Um, so you can turn the sound on. And then it's making sound waves. And then uh, play tone literally plays the tone, like the frequency. I don't know if this video is picking up the um, computer audio, um, but it's making a tone right now. And as you change the frequency, you change the pitch. All right, that's, I'm sorry, I'm wasting your time. Um, and then amplitude, notice it went totally quiet, um, or if it's not recording the audio, you wouldn't notice that, but whatever. Uh, with zero amplitude, there's no wave, there's no wave height. Uh, maximum amplitude is the maximum wave height, is the most energy. And you can also see the way they show it in the picture. Maximum amplitude, the waves are black and white, whereas if I bring it down to the middle, then the waves are a little bit more gray, um, a little bit closer to, uh, to no wave. Um, and then it's totally gray, 
no contrast at all if there's no wave at all. Um, so bring this back, and then you could show uh, the wave as it is, the wave right there, you could show it with particles. Um, so there'd be like air particle, particle, particles, not particles, particles uh, carrying the energy um, through the medium. It's a longitude and a wave. As the wave moves across the screen to the right, the particles vibrate left and right. Uh, turn around, play time. There we go. Um, and, and then you could do both, which is kind of wild when you when you watch that. Um, so there is sound. And then for light, it's the same principle. Turn it on, make slight waves, and then you can change the frequency, which would be the color of the light. You could have low frequency red light. You could have high frequency violet light. Like so. And the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Um, so that's there. And then amplitude, the brighter it is, the higher the amplitude, and the dimmer it is, the lower the amplitude. So there, there's no light at all. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of the app for what we're going to be needing. So walking through the questions here, uh, we have the first guy, the waves travel at a constant speed with the water dropper, come back water dropper. The waves travel at a constant speed. Why is this? Think about what you know about uh, media or mediums and waves. If the medium does not change, does the speed change? And the water is not changing, so the medium is not changing. And so what does the speed do? All right, that's what three is asking. Then four, um, even though the wave speed's constant, the amplitude decreases. Why is that? And so it's gonna, when a wave travels, it will lose energy. But with something like a car or a rolling ball, as it loses energy, it physically slows down. If you take a wave, it's not gonna slow down if it doesn't change the medium, but it does lose energy. And how would that happen? It's like if you threw a rock in the pond, there's a big splash and big ripples by where the rock went in, and then the ripples, as they travel outward from that splash, what do they do? Um, do they speed up, slow down? What happens to their amplitude? So think about that. Um, then number five, if you wanted more waves in the water, would you increase or decrease the frequency? Hmm, if I wanted more waves over time, if I wanted to increase the rate of waves, what would I do to the frequency? Think about what frequency it is. Then uh, six, test your prediction about the frequency since you can play with the frequency slider and uh, and see what that does to the frequency um, and the number of waves. Then number seven says, drag the tape measure over and measure the wavelength of one of the water waves. So here's my animation. I'm gonna catch that um, initial crest right at the top. And then I'm going to take my tape. I have the red plus right there, right where the tape is. Uh, and I'll stick it right there. And then drag the tape over to where the next crest is. And that gives me a wavelength of 2.5 centimeters. So I'm going to write that down. That would be number seven, 2.5 centimeters. And then eight says convert that from centimeters to meters. So you have to uh, think about how you want to move your decimal place or what you want to divide by to get from centimeters to meters. Um, all right, and that would be number eight. Then number nine says find the frequency. And so you're going to do this. Um, sorry, I just threw my pen and made a rattle. Um, and uh, so you're going to do this by using our um, stopwatch to get time first. And so I'm going to start the stopwatch. I'm paused right now. And then I already paused it. I caught the wave when it's at the uh, very beginning, um, at the height of its crest. I'm going to call that zero. So when the crest goes down and comes back, that would be one. That would be one wave. I want to count off 10 waves and then stop the clock. So if I start this right now, where is at zero currently, 
then I have one, yeah, two, three, these frequencies go up, four, five, six wave cycles, seven, eight, nine, get ready to stop it, and 10. So that was 10 waves. They're at almost 16 seconds, 15.99 seconds for 10 waves and so that's what you would do for uh 10 sorry for yeah for 10 then 11 um no 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 sorry it's nine uh the time for 10 waves is nine number 10 is the period the time for one so if you have the time for 10 waves in number nine and you want the time for one wave in number 10 think about what you might need to do for that um so I'm writing that down right now. And so now I have the period. That answer number 10 is called the period. Number 11, it wants the frequency. Well, if you have the period and you want the frequency, there is a formula on page 5 of the reference tables for that. I'll let you guys find it. Um, so that is 11. And 11 will give you the frequency. Now, 12 says using the wavelength from step 8, that's in meters, and then using the frequency from step 11, solve for the velocity of the water waves. That formula is on page 5 of your reference tables, but it's super important, so I'll tell you what it is. It's V equals F lambda. So you're taking the frequency and multiplying times the wavelength, and then you're getting the velocity of that wave. 13 says to check your work. You can use V equals D over T to check your work. So the first thing you're going to need is a distance, and so that would be from the faucet, put the that red plus under the faucet and bring the other one over to the other side over here. And that tells me that that distance is 9.5 centimeters. So the 9.5 centimeters is going to go in for number 13 and then 14 wants you to convert again from centimeters to meters. Did I say 9.4 centimeters? I meant 9.5. But you're going to convert, need to convert that to meters for number 14. Um, then 15 says, find the time for a wave to travel across the screen. So going back to my app, I'm going to pause the animation right when my crest peaks. Whoop, right there. Good. Um, and I'm going to track that crest across the screen. So I reset my timer, get it started, and the timer won't go until the animation goes. And I'm watching this crest here. So here it goes, this way, it's going, it's going, still going, getting tiny, still there, stop it. Now, I think I was a little late. I feel like um, it was maybe a little bit gone already, uh, but I got, so we'll say six seconds um, for when I, when I got there. All right, so six seconds is how long it took, so that's the answer number 15. And then 14 is that distance in meters, uh, 15 is the time, and so 16 with d over t, you're going to get the velocity of the wave, um, which is just as valid as v equals f lambda. In fact, we're going to test the validity. Um, but to do that, in order to do a percent difference, I'm not really sure which measurement is considered the accurate or um, correct one. So in that case, if you do percent difference, you take the average of the two values on the bottom. So it's the difference between their velocities divided by the average of the velocities times 100%. So let's see how we do. So I can tell you that my original velocity with V equals F lambda was 0.0156 meters per second. And the velocity with V equals D over T was 0.0158 meters per second. So if I subtract them, 0.0158 minus 0.0156, and then divide by the average, which is 0.0157 times 100, I get a 1.3% difference, uh, which is not zero. Um, I think the first time I did it, I actually got zero. Uh, but 1.3% one, 1 is not too shabby. And, um, and don't misread the lab. Some of you guys reached out and, and you were like, 
Oh, I'm supposed to get zero. No, you're not supposed to get zero. Maybe ideally you're supposed to get zero, but I just did this thing. I've practiced it a number of times already and I got 1.3. Um, so like, to be honest, if you guys were doing the lab, I wouldn't be surprised if you got like 15, 20%, um, with all due respect. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm just saying that like, uh, with not a lot of experience, you know, working with this thing. And, uh, so yeah, something along those lines. I only mentioned that not to tease you, but to let you know that if you get like 85%, then check something out. And I can tell you that, um, when people have issues with this stuff, it's usually not about clicking the mouse. It's about things like converting, you know, centimeters to meters and all of that stuff. So be careful there. So there are some other parts of the lab um, that I just wanted to comment on. The second piece after the dripping faucet is the sound um, bit. And um, there are some things that are different, but basically you're going to do V equals D over T again, um, and then do a percent difference calculation again but using the speed of sound at room temperature, 344 meters per second. Um, so that's 25. And 26 has a question about the particles, how they're handing off the energy, and how energy moves as a sound wave. Um, then 27 gets to the speed of light. Um, and yeah, so this guy right here um, makes reference to uh, I'm just reading it. Yeah, solve for the velocity of the light waves. Um, but yeah, in 33, I'm not going to have you do a percent difference calculation one more time. So I was just like, are you close? Um, and if you answer those questions, then you're good. Um, you don't need to write a conclusion or anything. And, and that should be it. Um, I hope that helps. Um, I think there was maybe some confusion about how the app worked and maybe the measurements and what have you. Um, if your lab still doesn't work or still is messed up or whatever, uh, please let me know and maybe I can walk through uh, where the problem is. Um, if I had to guess, for those of you that are having problems with this, remember to do the conversions um, and uh, to do them properly. Uh, and if you have issues with that, uh, let me know. Um, so thanks and I'll see you next video.